I was hoping that by this, this time we'd have all of our uh, wanderers back home, but I see that we haven't captured all of them yet. A lot of traveling during these, during these holidays. And I'm glad that they have, or at least are very close to coming to an end. And speaking of that, we will have a, <clears throat> a live open forum uh, service uh, Wednesday Wednesday night isn't Wednesday the Wednesday New Year's Tuesday is New Year's Eve Tuesday's New Year's Eve huh well that just messed everything <laughs> that messed everything up I wanted to do it this on Wednesday night Pardon? Do what? You can be here Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes, sir. Wednesday but not Tuesday. No, well, let's just do it Wednesday <laughs> night. Start the new year off right. Yeah, we could we could go to back to maybe I don't know <laughs> the Hebrew calendar. Or, or we could just make up our own calendar. Since, since Wednesday, I guess, then is January the 1st. All right. Well, we want to have a, a live open forum, and, and, and uh, my intention was that we do that with the coming of the new year, uh, not necessarily that we you know, made anything last till midnight because, well, you know, midnight really, hon, midnight comes at different times all over the world. Uh, so, um, well, you know, I, that, I don't know. There, <laughs> there might be some place that, uh, I, don't, I don't guess I can, I don't guess any place on the face of the earth, New Year's comes on Wednesday, does it? I'm, <laughs> but we will start the new year on Wednesday in a, in a live open forum. And everyone that can be here, well, wonderful, be here. You, you'll have a chance to be part of what's going on. But primarily it was to have that live uh, for you out there, you who are watching uh, this morning, you who are watching right now. And, and I think we'll still do that. that that's good. Uh, so we'll do that Wednesday. What would be a good time to start since this is totally informal here right now? <laughs> Everybody can see we haven't any real concrete plans right now. Uh, about 7 o'clock? Is that good? Okay, 7 o'clock, well, that'll be fine. That'll be 8 o'clock uh, in, uh, in the east, and, and, and that's good too. So just plan on taking a part of your, and you folks, of your Wednesday evening uh, and spend it with us. We have, along with... Uh, uh, teaching and sharing in an open forum, you'll be able to call in and you'll be able to email and we'll be on long enough to give you plenty of time to do that, you who will be watching this live from your own homes. Uh, we also will be discussing uh, some uh, outreach, uh, enlargement of outreach uh, and a lot of that through electronic ministry and we'd like to talk with you about that. We're, we are uh, introducing, uh, I, I smile about that because uh, 
our brother John Cassera, who's who really oversees the E Ministries. Uh, that's how you're seeing us live this morning, uh, would say we're going to launch a new program. Well, we're, we're going to introduce one anyway, and uh, it will be <coughs> CMI 24-7. And that means 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, you will be able to come to through the Ustream program, uh, you can go directly through Ustream. You can come to that program through our website. Uh, and whenever you are there, that program will be available to you. Something will be going on 24-7. Uh, uh, and we're, we're glad about that. We'll explain that, how how we're going to be able to do that and actually make it work. Uh, and that's part of, our, part of our determination and our desire to bring together uh, live by internet a number of our ministries that, uh, that of course are not here but they're, they're somewhere else but we would like to include them in the CMI network uh, by uh, internet and make their teaching and their sharing uh, available in whatever format they want to use. We will bring that and uh, put that on, on Ustream as well. But we will have something there that I feel will be edifying to the body of Christ. And remember, this, this, this reaches around the world, friends. You never know. You never know who finds it. And, well, you find out eventually, but you never know at that particular time. And uh, so uh, we're, we're excited about it and uh, pray that the Lord will lead us and guide us and direct us and that it will and that it will simply well that's what a net is you ever went fishing with a net you catch a lot more fish with a net than you do a line uh, that's what a net is that's what a network is it enlarges something and we would like to see the voice of this gospel enlarged and it's a, it's a privilege of ours to just have an opportunity to have a part in doing that. So these are some of the things that we'll be talking with you about just from time to time, but particularly uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to uh, have an email out to as many as we have email addresses informing them about this session. And uh, so we just uh, invite you to uh, be with us. You who uh, can be with us here is fine, and, and, and you who will be with us live, we look forward to a good, to a good time. And, uh, and uh, as John would say, we will launch, we'll launch the new year. <laughs> In more ways than one, I'm sure. Bless the Lord. Uh, also, you will be receiving the, month, the monthly CD uh, in a few days, and with that, there is another uh, CD, and it, is, it, will, it, it will be a CD concerning the uh, Sunday session that we had here, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. Uh, I'm not... I've lost track of it now, but we had requests that to just that it, could we uh, for that and request some mentioning could we just uh, use that as as the monthly CD and uh, well we, we didn't do that but we 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 uh, we're sending it out with that and uh, uh, I trust that it'll be a blessing to those who receive it. 
um, and that the Lord would use it to, to set direction for us. And I, I don't mean so much in our walk in heavenly places or in our walk in growing up in Christ, but to set direction in ministry, in outreach, um, reaching out beyond ourselves. So uh, you will have two CDs in that, uh, in that mailer, and uh, we trust that it will. We trust that it will be a blessing. All right, I want to uh, get back to our study for just a little while this morning on extreme salvation. Extreme salvation. I, I believe that the CD you're getting, it clicks in my mind now, had to do with this same thing, but under the title of Extreme Life. Yeah, Extreme Life. Uh, well, the point is that the term extreme, I use the term extreme, because it speaks of Christ himself. Now you think about it. You think about it. I, I remember, and I've told you this before. Uh, in fact, I've talked about this not just here, but in several places in the last few months, uh, from summer, say, on up to now. Uh, I, I, I was up at the barn and doing whatever I was doing there, but my thoughts uh, were on uh, the reality of our life in Christ. And just the reality of Christ. And, and the term extreme kept coming to my mind. How extreme. How extreme. And see, I hesitate to say Christianity because most people's idea of Christianity is so tame. <laughs> so watered down. So legalistic. So religious. That it's just a format. It's just a format. Now, you know, here we sit this morning, and, and, and we should. Those who really have a love for God and, and function as part of his body should do so together and should not forsake the assembling. But, but, but sweetheart, sitting here this morning is not our salvation. And, and sitting in this building this morning is not the same thing as having Christ as our life. Now, if we sit here because Christ is our life, if we sit here because we understand that we're his body and we enjoy the fellowship of the Spirit and our gathering together, you know, well and good. In fact, that's the way it should be. And, and I was talking about yesterday uh, on the monthly uh, CD that true ministry, do we really believe does anybody, I mean, if you stop and think, stop and think. There, there, there is a radio teacher, oh man, uh, probably the only one that personally I li will listen to, you know, whatever that means. But I enjoy listening to him. Uh, and the name of that program is Let My People Think. And I thought, boy, <laughs> that. That would be a novelty. <laughs> you know, that'd be a novelty if, <laughs> if the people of God would ever now and then just think. I see, I know, all right, see, that, uh, that, that sounds like criticism or sounds uh, facetious and all of that, but it really isn't. It really isn't. We just kind of, I don't know, hon, we, we just kind of plow along, it seems like, most people, and, and, and depend upon the formality and the, uh, the rights of religion, the formality of it, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and never stop and think, let alone think within the boundaries of, and these are endless boundaries. Yeah. 
within the boundaries of the scripture. Oh, I know they're all in this book this morning, but the boundaries are endless. Because here is the testimony of Jesus Christ, Amen. the living word of God, who has no boundaries. See, he is the one that's extreme. When one is able to say, when one is able to say, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, darling, I, I would call that an extreme statement. I would call that extreme. That's my definition of extreme. When everything that is given of God, and the scriptures bear all this out now, and you know this. I'm just calling it to your attention. When every thought, and I repeat, the scriptures bear this out. When every thought of God is gathered into one. When every promise of God, every promise ever given, ever recorded, is gathered into one. Whenever prophecy that is contained in the scripture, either a prophetic type, shadow, a prophetic happening, or a prophetic statement, is gathered in to one for its absolute fulfillment. Amen. That is extreme. It's extreme. See, most of us would think extreme would be the multi a multitude of things, an endless multitude of things. But extreme is when the endless multitude of things, the things of God, the things of God, is when that multitude of things, think about it, think, think as long as you can think and you can never think beyond what God has given, what God has performed, what God has promised, what God has said, the, the things of God that the scripture called the all things of God. Think about it. Just think about it. I was walking around, you can think about it because I was walking around in the barn thinking about it. Think about it. And then realize that it pleased the Father. It pleased God. That all of that come to be perfectly fulfilled in his son. Yeah, the ultimate promise of God is eternal life. I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Hon, that's extreme. He doesn't say, now, I'm, there's true things about me. And, 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 and there's a way that I believe in, and I'll show it to you. There's a way among many ways. No, 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 no. The extremeness of it. See, that's what just aggravated the people of the day, the religious people of the day. Aggravated them beyond, beyond sanity, in fact. Because who can say that their action wasn't an action of just extreme madness? Aggravated them beyond sanity. When he would stand and say, I am the door. I want you to see how extreme this is. You can't get into this house except by me. This is my Father's house of which I'm speaking. And of course that's bound up in a relationship with the Father because it's talking about a household. A household, not a structure somewhere, but a household. You can't be there except by me. And then finally all of that comes to be realized that what he means by that. <coughs> is by me is that I live in you. If I am joy, how then can you have joy except I 
live in you. If I am peace, how can you have peace except I live in you? If I am life, if I am life, not a life, not some life, life, L-I-F-E, life, then how can you have life? How is it that you live? Except I live in you. Now, darling, that's my idea of extreme. It's extreme because there's not any, there's no options. And you know that the natural man, the Adamic man, you and I, we are full of options. For God's sake, you know, I get caught from out and say, well, just give me an option. And there isn't any. I mean, with Christ, there isn't any. I mean, couldn't you show me a way that's probably the best way, but also couldn't you show me a way that though it's not the best, at least it's acceptable? No. I am the way. That's it. I am not only the best way, I am the acceptable way, I am the only way. Amen. <laughs> See, that's it. And that's what we're looking at as extreme salvation. That which is gathered up in one. But my God, honey, the wonder of that, the glory of that, is that that one is freely given of God. That one is the gift of God to any soul who will turn to him. To any soul. That will turn to him. Okay? And then you embark upon a, 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 a you embark upon a a, 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 a a journey. It is a journey. You embark upon a journey, a spiritual walk. Running the race looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher, not only the beginning. The ending as well, not end as in cessation, but end as in the ultimate goal. The perfect end, the perfect goal. Looking unto Jesus. Walking in the light as he is in the light. Walking in the light. As he is in the light. I think I said something about throwing the flashlights of, of, of our religion and the flashlights of our belief that we shine on little things that we believe. How about just getting rid of them and walking in the light? And I think I may have mentioned on that same tape, it's coming back to me now. <laughs> because it was about this extreme life. And I think I may have mentioned that there's one place and one time that your flashlight is as useless as warts on a fence post and that would be at high noon on a perfect sunshine day I mean honey it's as useless as a stick well more useless than a stick at that time at that place your flashlight's no good why? because it's outshined by the sun you have to have darkness to use a flashlight. And yet the flashlight will only light up one little spot at a time. You never see the whole picture, do you? You never see... I mean, I used to coon hunt. <laughs> I loved I loved it. I loved it. It was up in the Texas Panhandle. The place I coon hunted on was over 200,000 acres. That's a lot of miles. And I'd be walking along up on the river bank or the creek bank, you know, just walking along, had my flashlight and everything. And, hon, I was a young man then. I mean, a young guy then, but it didn't make any difference. I was walking along in that flashlight, you know, because you see it hits, it hits things and that throws a shadow. It hits something else, that throws a shadow. You got this flashlight. I've walked along and fell off in a hole three or four feet deep with my flashlight. 
that you would never do when the sun was shining. And yet that's the way most believers try to live for Christ. Our little flashlight ministries. But it comes to me, and I'm back, I'll come back to my point, it comes to me. Can true ministry, can true ministry be contained and fulfilled in the time of a church service? And you look, honey, I'm, I'm not just criticizing, I'm, I'm saying think, think. Look at our church world. When is the word ministry mostly used? During a church service. During a church service. And then we open the doors and man, we flood out. And it's not anybody's idea that we're going forth into the earth to minister. No, no, no. That's the idea coming into the building. Can true ministry be contained? I'm not telling you there's no ministry going on there. I'm telling you, can ministry be contained and fulfilled in the time of a church service? Or the timing of a group gathering? Or the time of a Bible conference? The time that we're spending this morning? Sure, it can be exercised, but can it be defined and fulfilled by what takes place in that little period of time? And then say, okay, now let's, let's go and then we'll come back and we'll be ministered to again. And all of our cliches. It isn't true ministry the function of life? You, you, now see, it takes some thinking. What, what really else do I have? Better said, what really else is there to have than life? Life abundant. Life abounding, life eternal. And who is that? Not what is that, who is that? It is Christ. We all know this. Oh. I'm turned there. Wonder how that happened. Galatians 2, verse 19 through 21. Oh yes, we've read this so often, that's the reason I just left it laying here for a while. For, this is Paul speaking, this is the one who served, uh, his first lifetime, his first time of trying to find life under the law. Really tried to find it under the law. Under the righteousness of the law, he tried to achieve the righteousness of the law. Paul tried to live as the law demanded a person to live. And we know, of course, that the law was given not to show someone how to be righteous, but to show them that there was nothing they could do to be righteous. We know that. The scriptures testify that. But Paul tried. We know he came to a train wreck to a train wreck. We know because of one of his 
writings and his testimony in Romans 7 that he finally came to the absolute end of the law and at the end of the law he found himself without righteousness and cried out, O oh God, O oh God, O oh wretched man that I am, who, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he found that answer in Christ. We have a record of how he found it and the timing of it on the Damascus Road. No, I'll go no further with that. But my point is, that's this guy writing the letter. That's this, this guy talking now. Who has seen both sides of the issue. He has tried to find righteousness, life, eternal life. In the scripture, the Old Testament, the scripture, in the law, in the commandments, and he can't do it. He can only find enough to frustrate him. Because he believes it's true and he can't perform it. He can't find it in himself. And nobody else can either. No one else can either. But Paul was determined to do it. Until the Lord arrested him, met with him. I don't know why the Lord chose Paul, but the thought comes to me possibly it was because he was even under the law and maybe even in the wrong place. He was seeking God with all of his heart. And maybe that is a prerequisite to the Lord dealing with you. To the Lord approaching you and showing. Maybe, maybe it is. A heart that really wants to know the Lord. Not a heart that says, I know all there is to know. No, a heart that really wants to know the Lord. And it's really crying out. A heart that's honest enough to say, I'm not finding this in me. I'm not finding what I read here in me. And I'm, I'm doing, and he was going through all the sacrifices. He was doing everything. Still wasn't finding it. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. <laughs> that I might live unto God. Paul found his answer in the cross. He come to realize under the law that a man is under this law, not because he's a Jew, but because God has placed creation under it and called creation to accountability by it. And Paul realized and wrote so long as a man liveth, he is under the law. You can't fulfill it. You can't break it. You can't, you know, I mean, you, know, you can break it. You can't fulfill it. But my point is, you can't, you can't just, it never, it never passes away. For everything about the law is a testimony of Jesus Christ. The sacrifices of it, the priesthood of it, the righteousness of it. The promises of it, everything. And yet if you just try to live by the writings of the law and by the testimony of the law, all you come to is inward condemnation. Because it isn't the law that makes you free, but it is the one of whom the law is a testimony that makes you free. And how does he do that? Through his death. As long as a man liveth is under the law, then what's God's answer? Death. The cross. And isn't that what the death of Jesus is all about? What did the Lord Jesus do that he should die? What, what, what was it? Now, honey, I've said these things. I mean, I've said these things so often I'm just, God, I could. 
But every now and then I'll stop and think about it. It's not just words to me. I'll stop and think about it. What did he do? What did he do? See, we think the gift of God begins with life. The gift of God begins with death. The death of his son. What did the son do? Nothing. Righteous, holy, perfect, obedient. Who became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. He didn't go to the cross because he was in sin. He, he didn't go to the cross because he needed God. He had to sever for a period of time. He had to make of himself no reputation. He had to take upon himself the form of a servant. He had to be born of a woman. He had to be made under the law for a short time. All of that made of no reputation. Why? So he could become as, let me say it this way, so he could become as good as I am. Yes, becoming as good as I am made him of absolute no reputation. <laughs> God. <laughs> yes. So, if death was required, God provided death. He provided a death. Provided a death in his son. For all who would embrace him in that death. And that's what Paul's talking about here. You're going to read it. That's what the man puts in about three or four sentences here. But my Lord, every epistle he writes and every every waking moment of the time that he lived and traveled through the churches, he said what he actually has written right here in three sentences, or three verses. The death, the gift of God, that's why, honey, that's why, think, 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 that's why the life is extreme. Now, think about this. Again, think. We think, here, here's our idea of life. And it is natural life. It is natural life. Our idea of life is, okay, we're born of a woman. We grow up. We live. We die. And then there's all kind of arguments after that, which is usually just stupidity. On the part of man, trying to make something better than it is. So it's all kind of arguments. Let's not even go there. I'm looking at that order, and, and that whole order is natural, and it's contrary to spiritual life. Because in spiritual life, first we die. The natural man faces death. First we die. I'm not talking about physically. I'm not talking about physically. It hasn't got anything to do with old age or tuberculosis. It's a death provided by the cross. And it has to be worked in me by the Holy Spirit. Paul says in Romans 6, it is part of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you not understand, he says, that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, and that's a work of the Spirit. I have no problem with water baptism. I baptize people virtually all over the world under most every kind of condition you can imagine. I have no problem with that, but I'm telling you, he's not talking about water baptism, which is a, which is a, which is a wonderful evidence and a wonderful statement and a wonderful all of that. But we're talking about something that works truly in your heart by the Spirit of God. You can go out here and be baptized until you, somebody drowns you. It ain't going to change anything unless it's a testimony of something that is changed. And Paul deals with the baptism of the Spirit. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, he says in another place, to work of the Spirit. To work of the Spirit. Now you can get your pencil out and you can join an organization. You can join a church organization. You can join this one. I'd be happy to have you do it. 
But that's still not the baptism that the Spirit, with which the Spirit baptizes you. He baptizes you into the body of Christ. You don't join it. As a member of the body of Christ, having been baptized there by the Holy Spirit, you may join yourselves together in places throughout the earth and commit yourselves there one to another as unto Christ. But first, there is this being baptized into Christ. This work of the Spirit in my soul. And Paul says, do you not understand? This is in Romans, the sixth chapter. First few sentences. First few sentences. In fact, he's writing to the Romans. And I think, where is he writing? From Corinth, I believe. Writing this letter to the Romans. And he's talking about coming to see them when he can. Uh, he's making a trip to Jerusalem and he hopes he'll have time to come and spend some time with them there in, in Rome. Now, uh, you know. And he says, all right, do you not know that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Buried with him by baptism into death so that, like as Christ was raised up out from among the dead by the glory of God, even so, we should walk in newness of life. And right here, he's going to tell you how that works. And he goes on to, to do that in, in that letter to the Romans. But right here, he's going to tell you how, how does that work? How does that work? Because it is something that the Spirit of God works in our soul based upon a finished work of Christ, based upon what Christ completed. Hun, Christ completed something at the cross. He completed a death, he completed a burial, and he completed a resurrection. And now he can say, I am the resurrection, I am the life. That's extreme. That is extreme. Because that is so extreme, it means no one then, no one then can be in the resurrection except the one who says, I am the resurrection, live in them. Now, hon, that's extreme. But that is true salvation. That's what God created the soul for. And I know what religion's done, Jesus. I know what religion, forget about it, for, just forget about it. God created the soul for life. And Christ is that life. Christian religion is not that life, Christ is that life. Nor is any other religion that life. Christ is that life. This is extreme. But truth, uh, truth is extreme. Exceptionally extreme. So Paul gathers it up here and he says, yes, yes, I was under the law. But now, now. I threw the law and become dead to the law that I might live unto God. What does he mean by that? I am crucified with Christ. The law demanded my death. Through the law, I have become free from the law. Christ took me to the cross. When he died, I died with him. When he died... You understand that? I mean, that's written in the Scripture. You know these things are written in the Scripture. I'm asking that we think about it. And allow the Spirit of the Lord to deal with us about it. Not just run through it like water through a sieve and say, Good preacher, brother. I'm not, no, that's not what we're interested in. That, sometimes I doubt that that has anything to do with ministry at all, let alone being true ministry, but I won't upset people by saying that. Let, just, let's think. I 
how, how, how's this? Through the law, dead to the law, I am crucified with Christ. I have surrendered in my heart, in my soul, to that death, to the death provided for me by Christ on the cross. What did he do to die? Nothing. Then why did he die? That we by him could become dead to sin. That we could be baptized by the Holy Spirit. That we could experience becoming dead to sin. So that we might then be alive unto God. Well, how does that work? Being dead to sin, crucified with Christ. That's the work of the cross. Nevertheless, right here, nevertheless, I live. <laughs> and, okay, that's what you mean by dead to the law that you might live unto God. Yes, okay, dead to the law, I got that. Crucified with Christ. Yes. The Spirit working that reality in your very soul. Bringing your very soul to experience that dead to sin. Dead to sin. Dead to it. Paul said, I'm crucified to, the, to sin. I'm crucified to the world. I'm, and the world is crucified unto me. What about alive unto God? Well, he says, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Yet not I. Christ liveth in me. And that is where it gets extreme. It isn't that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live because Christ made me to live again. That isn't what he says. That isn't what Jesus told Nicodemus when he talked to him about new birth. He told Nicodemus, it's not about you being born again. It's not about you. It's about being born of the Spirit. It's about having the Spirit of God in you, Christ, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Paul says, I live, but not as me living, not as Paul dead, now Paul alive again. No, no. No, this is extreme. Not I, Christ liveth in me. There's no way you can add to that verse. There's no way you can add to those words. You can just repeat them again and again and again. And say, oh Father, would you, would you open my heart to that reality? Would you just reveal that Son in me that I may know Him and see Him? That's the extreme of it. Oh yes. I live. That is I have life. But the life I have. Is Christ. The risen one. Is my resurrection. The living one. Is my life. And I've often said. And it sounds to some like a play on words. Sometimes we do get lost in semantics, but that isn't what I'm doing this morning. I'm telling you, He is not the resurrection of me, but He is my resurrection. He is not the life of me, but He is my life.
What did God do at the cross? Thank God, thank God for the wisdom of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. What did he do at the cross? He got rid of me. And if I would only come to the truth of that judgment, to the truth of that reality, and you can only come there in the face of Jesus Christ, seeing the one who truly is your life, whose body you truly are. My God, hon, what do you want? What is better than extreme life? What is better than the Son of the living God by His Holy Spirit? Living in my soul. Huh. My, my. Now that's not, as some would say, that is not Christ in me as me. That's Christ in me as himself. Totally other than me. That is Christ, the life of my soul, the life of my soul, the resurrection of my soul, the joy, the peace of my soul. Come unto me, he says. Learn of me. I will give you rest unto your soul. Oh, hallelujah. Well, extreme. And it is extreme life. And we've exhausted another hour talking about it. My God, huh? We might be able to exhaust an hour. You, you would have to exhaust eternity. And that, you see, that's the whole point. We're in this for eternity. We're in this for eternity. I would be the most miserable man upon the face of earth. I mean it, I know, because I know me. If I woke up every morning just facing life on earth. No, no, I face eternal life in Christ on earth. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? No. Uh, I don't try to find anything into the earth, but I'll tell you what we can do. We can share in the earth what we find in Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lamb of the living God. Extreme salvation is extreme life. Blessed be his name. Well, that's enough this morning. Let me finish these verses and then I'll close with doing that. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, every day, every day, walking down the road. For Paul, going here, going there. Realizing I have this treasure in earthen vessels. He writes that in a place. The life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith. The faith of the Son of God. Faith of the Son of God is a term that is translated in Ephesians as the knowledge of the Son of God. So what I live in the flesh is what I realize I have in Christ. And how do I do that? By the understanding of him the life I live every day I live he says in the knowledge of the son of God yes who loved me and gave himself for me I do not frustrate the grace of God in other words I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by trying to have my own life in Christ no no by trying to find my righteousness. Other, no. I will not frustrate the grace of God.
For if righteousness be by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I won't frustrate the grace of God. I will not try to find a life of my own because I have none. I don't have one when I start out and I don't have one when I end up except I find it in Christ. I will not frustrate the grace of God. I will not live as a continual frustration to God's grace. But rather, I will live understanding I am crucified with Christ. My, my. Nonetheless, no, much more. The opposite of nonetheless is much more. I live, but it isn't me. It's not just soul existence and self-awareness. No. Christ liveth in me. Extreme life. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord bless you folks who are with us live this morning. We appreciate it very much. We appreciate you who gather with us. And, and I trust that we're through the holiday times where we will be not so much interrupted. We've had a lot of interruptions in December because of, well, snowstorms, ice storms, and, and people gone. And uh, we trust that's at least part of that's coming to an end. And uh, be with us on Wednesday. This coming Wednesday will be our next live broadcast. Not tomorrow, not Monday, but Wednesday. Because we'll do the same thing Wednesday that we would do tomorrow, but we'll do it in a bigger way and for a longer period of time. And then with that, with that telecast on Wednesday, we'll be back in, uh, in order. All right? Lord bless. Amen. Amen. Okay.